what's going on everyone welcome back to my channel this video it'll be a bit more rambly but in this video basically i'll be going through just what's been going through like my mind and what i've been up to these past few months and you know whether or not i'll be staying in medicine for like the long term once i graduate i'm, I'm still going to finish medical school but at least um for the time being i'm not too sure if i will you know start f1 or if after f1 and f2 if i will continue on into some some further training so let's get into it so now for like the past few months it's been a thing where there's been a lot of uproar in the whole medical community in terms of um, different problems the main problem being pay now doctors are criminally underpaid i'm sure like the, the majority of the uk public don't realize how much money that the uk uh, doctor is actually making for the most part like it's the f1 to f2 years it's anywhere from 32 to 38k and then maybe upwards from there um before you become a consultant um, i'm not sure it, if it even goes past 65 and I, I believe it's 79 once you fully qualify and that could be anywhere from a nine like nine years or nine plus years and um, once you finish medical school so after five to six years of a medical school now of course the obvious comeback to this is that most people don't or should not go into medicine for the money but at the same time with all the responsibility being a doctor of looking after patients of having other people's lives you know, effectively in your hands and your decisions your day-to-day -day job could rapidly affect their life and you know um, like how they live their life what will happen you know there's just there's so much responsibility on doctors that the pay just doesn't equate to the um, to the level of responsibility if you were to compare this to other sectors now of course it's hard to compare this to other sectors because medicine is a job that is run by the NHS which is you know a public controlled organization if you look into other sectors as well they're also striking like like um, nurses for example like train drivers like teachers so it's not just a problem with medicine as a whole there is a massive problem with medicine here in the UK and I'm, I'm not sure what the future is looking like um, for, for medicine long term a lot of newly qualified graduates in medicine and um, they don't even work here or train here they immediately move to other countries like Australia if you look on Twitter for example there's been a lot of adverts out there from Australian firms trying to hire doctors so long term I'm not too sure um, as for me um, or for like my colleagues I'm not too sure how, how medicine will go unless there is a rapid change even the period that we're in right now where there's strikes I'm not really sure if the strikes will really um, solve anything um, I was optimistic at the start but the fact that the government hasn't yet come to the table with any reasonable offer I don't really believe that the strikes will do much and you know even the pay that you'd receive after the strikes that's that's just to restore the pay to the way the pay was 10 years ago like realistically we should be even asking for a pay increase but let me not get into that what have I been thinking so I think the main thing for me is um, when I first got into medicine, I first did a three year biomedical sciences degree. And then after that, in my third year, I applied straight away to study medicine. And um, I always thought, okay, if I don't get into medicine first time, then I'm just gonna leave it. I'll do a master's in finance and then move from there. Um, hopefully get into some form of, of um, finance role. I, was, I always had banking somewhere on my mind. And you know, over these past three years, I think from second year of medicine, like it started to creep its head out more. Um, I, I do have, um, you know um, a, a close family member that's in finance um, as well as some friends and just research from reading like a lot of articles and day in the lives and the role of a, of a banker is and also looking into, into other sectors as well um, like like pharma um, and just really any industry as well uh, my medical degree could be relevant I've been doing a lot of research um, into those different industries and right now the main things I'm looking at right now is investment banking pharma um, or if I was to stay in medicine it would be to hopefully go on and train as an ophthalmologist so to do like that training pathway uh, because obviously I believe that that's a specialty I love it the most I find it the most interesting the conditions are the most interesting and the lifestyle is something that um, also suits me as well so I feel like I, I'll be able to have a good work-life balance I'll be able to still do things that I enjoy like read books li listen to audiobooks train and go to the gym hang out with friends um, and also just like the fact that um, there is also the option of doing private practice after that's something that's also intrigues me but again this is after two years of foundation training and seven years of specialty training in ophthalmology. So that's like, that's nine years from once I finish, or nine years from 2025. So 2034, that's when I, I become a consultant and then finally reach the earning potential that um, I feel would be would be desirable. And of course, this is this is also like the main reason or the main thing that most people say, stay in medicine because after a while, earning potential will start to rack up and you will start to 
get your money's worth but i don't know if this is something that i want to wait a further nine years to start making the money that i feel I, sh I should be getting close to like now after already investing three years of biomedical sciences and five years of medicine i don't know if i want to spend another nine years waiting for my salary to um, increase and these are just the things that have been going on in my head over these past few um uh, and so over these past few weeks i've spent some time applying to different sorts of internships i've applied to a lot of investment banking internships and also some in finance and i'm just looking to apply to as many as i can um, in terms of roles for for pharma i do need experience experience in pharma as well but so far i haven't really found any internships for my penultimate year so it seems like the way it works is you apply for a graduate role in your final year which would be next year for me or this coming year 2024 if you guys have any help or any tips or any sort of connections that you could help me with in in order to increase my chances of getting an investment back in internship this summer or, or any sort of role even if it's unpaid but any sort of experience or role in that sector that i could add to my cv to increase my chances of getting a job once i graduate and please let me know my linkedin is charles ones i put my name is literally just the name of my channel also link my linkedin down below i'll leave my linkedin here somewhere on the screen as well so please if you want to connect with me let me know different ways that um, i could increase my chances of getting into investment banking or any sort of banking or healthcare banking then please let me know where am I now? I think the main thing that I've been doing now is I got a book recently. Um, I, I can try to find a book, but just to summarize it, it's basically just a book <clears throat> that is going through day-to-day -day life of an investment banker, uh, what they do, and just breaking down the role. Just so if I was to get an internship by the grace of God, I'll be able to answer different questions in the interview. I've also started this course on HSBC. They have like a five-hour um, investment banking work experience role on their website that, that I'm going through right now so hopefully that could also go on my LinkedIn and my CV and uh, apart from that I've just been applying to as many internships as I can I've done a few interviews um, already some video ones and I've also done some online assessments so far I've been unsuccessful I've applied I've gotten rejection so far from HSBC CIBC actually no not not HSBC but CIBC and something else but um you know we'll keep going I will, I've expected this already um, I've went onto the student room I've went on to reddit and I've just been seeing anyone has been in this similar position where they're in medical school they're in their third fourth fifth year they're finished and they're trying to break into banking what they've done and what they've did and the main thing that stood out for me is getting some form of spring internship now since I'm in my fourth year I don't think that's possible I think that's mainly reserved for first year students uh, and also in you know finance degrees economic degrees or business degrees but the second thing is also to I think and the main thing is to do a summer eight to ten week internship so that's the main thing that I'm just trying my best to get now so again guys if you have any sort of tips that you can help me or you if there's anything else that they want to me to talk about um, i'll try and keep you guys updated in this process over the next few, uh, six months um before the internship starts in summer 20, 2024 what i'm doing the books i'm reading and um, how i'm preparing for it uh, i've also looked into taking the cfa as well now i don't know how this would work i believe i may need to take this in final year just so i'd have enough time to revise for it casually in my free time while i'm also studying for main medical school because i'm still in my fourth year i'm halfway through i still have exams here to study for so I don't want to, to to sacrifice my grades or even passing the year just because I want to study for a CFA exam and I'm not even sure if the CFA is as relevant as just doing a summer internship so again these are just different things that I need to um, work on and figure out um, and talk about and then hopefully uh, once I have more information by the grace of God if I get an internship I'll be able to make a video to show you guys how I did that whether you're in medicine or you're not in medicine so again guys um yeah that's it for this video is just a quick run through of what i'm doing what how i've been feeling what's been going on the past few months if you have any questions please let me know down below um subscribe follow me on linkedin connect with me let's get through this together even if you're not trying to get into banking or medicine if you want tips for medicine in general then let me know but connect with me there follow me on instagram just charles 100 i post pretty much daily on like what i'm eating how, how i'm working out how i'm training uh, and yeah subscribe and comment for more videos